I'm Sunny Shepherd and I'm an artist. Although I would say that I usually call myself a painter, I think it would be more accurate to say that I'm um, an interdisciplinary mixed media artist. I tend to branch out from painting into like a lot of installation, sculpture, embroidery. I work in a very cyclical way. My process is this constant back and forth between creation and destruction, control and letting go of that control. Where does my spirit come from as an artist? I've been making work for a really long time, my whole life really. So I think that it originally started as this need to express what I was imagining in my head. And, you know, I was creating worlds and characters and stories from a very young age. And then as I started getting into painting, um, it became even more of an emotional outlet for me to express things that I was feeling within my head, trying to express the way that I feel that I perceive the world and, and doing it in a visual way that I felt like I couldn't do with words. So I think the spirit of my work really just comes from that expression of, of the inner life and that the creative consciousness. I started developing themes that were related to psychology, uh, like feelings of depression and anxiety. And when I started painting on a really large scale, I realized that there was something that I could do that would express this atmosphere, this emotional atmosphere to a viewer. So um, over time, I sort of started thinking about like, okay, how do I put the viewer within the painting? And I started making these spaces for the viewer to try to inhabit uh, within the painting. I'm very interested in how the mind works um, on, on the individual level and the differences in how people perceive the world and themselves. I have been studying a lot of philosophy and psychology about perception and cognition. I tend to do a lot of studies into dreams and I find that I'm very influenced by the works of surrealist artists. So I think when you're talking about like mental activity, a lot of the time our brains abstract what we are perceiving from our environments. So I like to use that abstraction in my work. Um, my work tends to have like an ambiguous quality of objects that are there or not there, or they look like one thing, but they also look like another. So I try to amplify the um, sort of dreamy quality. The first thing that I want to do is to express myself. Um, I think that any artist, that's really their main thing, is expressing themselves, something inside that they can't really say verbally. It's, it's about being able to open up conversations in a way that maybe just trying to directly bring it up wouldn't work. I think that art has the ability to connect people and make people think about things in different ways. When I'm working on my art, I want to be able to create things that are relatable. You know, maybe the whole story isn't there the first time that you look at it because you want to be able to have the viewer pick up on the narrative by themselves or be able to ask questions or have conversations and disagree with one another. I don't think that I have all the answers to my work. It's all about what is your art saying to the people who are looking at it and how is it making them talk to one another? We have so many experiences in our lives that we think that we're alone in them, but other people experience those too. And if we just shift our perspective and try to see where other people are coming from, I think that we could definitely make our world a better place a place where we don't have to feel so alone. Contemporary artists that I'm looking at are Anselm Kiefer. He works so many different materials into his pieces and he gets the sculptural in there as well as the painted aspect and there's just this gritty history to it. I also love Ida Applebrug and her use of feminism and the history behind her work as well. More recently, I've discovered an artist named Howard Schwartzberg, and he does a lot with uh, working with different materials like cloth and creating sculptural paintings. So he's really been a big influence on my most recent work. The work that I would call the rev work um, is kind of what I was doing. I would call that my older work. 
I, was, I think that the red work is coming from more of a primal place, sort of like this need to survive, this physical thing. Whereas the work in blue, I would, th I think it's more of like this sense of elevation um, and and breathiness. It's like the psychological quality, but for the red, it's more of a, a crudeness and um, sort of you're going on survival instincts, and then the blue feels more like following your intuition and your intellect. Right now, um, I'm doing a lot more with the blue work which also has a lot of orange and, and green and yellow in it as well. But um, I'm going back and forth between paintings and then more of like an installation or sculptural type of work. And I'm trying to bring elements of painting into the sculpture and elements of sculpture into the paintings. So I'm going back and forth between the 2D and the 3D. And I'm also trying to marry the older work that I was doing primarily in red, black, and white with the work that I'm currently doing. There's a lot of different ways that I can see my artwork developing. Right now, I'm really trying to push to find sort of the essence of, of the work, sort of, you know, the unifying threads that are connecting all of it. Um, my work tends to do a lot in terms of variation in visuals and materials. And uh, so I'm, I'm kind of branching out on materials. I'm working with plaster and resin, and I'm doing a lot with like the fiber arts and sewing. I want to continue to push those things, but still pay homage to my roots in painting. I always start with the composition. Sometimes it's from a thumbnail that I've worked out in my uh, sketchbook, but sometimes I just start on the canvas sketching out with charcoal, um, just like the framework of architecture or like a horizon line or something like that. I really just try to stick to that and I block in colors based on that. So the first things that I'm doing is is just working out like where, where the eye is going to be moving on the page. Um, and then as I start going in and adding more detail, if I feel like it's getting kind of chaotic, then I pair it back down to those original shapes that I sketched out in, uh, in the very first layer and, and just try to like get back to the simpler part of it. I think that as the work builds and you, you have this body of work to come together, the palette becomes more harmonious and that helps keep it quiet. I tend to stray away from the illustrative. It's less about the story that's going on and more about the emotions that are coming from it. So instead of putting a lot of objects or furniture or people um, in my work, I kind of pare it down to just a few things that give you the hints to what are what's going on. Leaving a few details in there and the rest being ambiguous uh, does a lot to help with that quiet atmosphere. There are so many materials that I would like to work with in the future. Right now I'm thinking a lot about like abandoned furniture and how I can reuse that and kind of give it a new life. I love the idea that it's got this history that I don't know about. So I'm thinking about like finding pieces of furniture that are left on the side of the road or that I've picked up at consignment stores and repurposing them into pieces of artwork that can be experienced by other people. It says a lot about the perseverance, mental perseverance in not, you know, you don't give up, you, you keep going and you don't throw yourself out, you, be, you recycle yourself and you make something new out of situations that you don't like. Um, but also, I think it's important because these objects have a history of their own that I can't control. So I think my focus right now is furniture, but in the future, there's really no telling what kinds of things I'll be using. These, I'm, I don't have a title, a final title for them yet, but I'm currently calling them plaster hose. And uh, this was a collaborative project that I did with my mother um, in which I wrapped myself in cellophane and then I put on a pair of pantyhose and then uh, I was unable to move from the waist down at that point and she covered me in cheesecloth and plaster and then I let it dry and she cut me out. So I really gave up a lot of the control to her on this project and it definitely touched on like this sense of community and family that I'm looking for in my work. So it was really interesting 
and I have a plan for it for for a final kind of like a sculpture. Um, so this is one of my pillow paintings that I've done. Uh, it has a cushion inside and embroidery on the front as well. <laughs> kind of playing with like concepts of you know sleeping and and comfort and this it looks like a painting and yet it's very soft and homey and inviting in a way. Um, so it's like are you supposed to touch it? Is it a precious object or is it something that you're meant to interact with uh, like you would in a domestic setting? In the next couple of months, I am planning on doing a big move um, to Arizona. I'm gonna go to Phoenix and I'm planning on working with some uh, galleries and you know, making myself part of the art community there and continuing to work on my artwork at home. And uh, I definitely wanna take a break and give myself a chance to figure out what artwork I really want to be creating um, outside of school. So, yeah. Thank you.